what CBDC and digital IDs and vaccine passports will do is they will snap into place a fourth fence. And when that fence snaps into place, we are locked down financially and digitally. I call it digital concentration camps. This technology can turn our homes, our cars, and our communities literally into digital concentration camps. When I say that, people don't believe that the vision is this dark, but I want to show you three videos to give you a sense of what this feels like. The first video is Augustine Carsons, who is the head of, he's the general manager of the Bank of International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland. Who here knows who the BIS is? So this is the Central Bank of Central Banks. 63 Central Banks are members of the BIS from Basel, Switzerland. The rarest thing in the world is to see a central bank tell you the, a banker tell you the truth. Now you're going to get to see a central banker tell you the truth. A very rare moment. We tend to establish the equivalence with cash. Uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important, and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, she, to what cash is. What he just told you is if you're not allowed to buy chocolate, your money won't work to buy chocolate. If you're not allowed to go more than five kilometers from your home, your car or your money won't work more than five kilometers from your home. And that, those rules can be dictated and controlled at a phenomenally central level. We're talking about the end of sovereignty. So this is taxation without representation. If I want to double taxes and just take it out of your account, no problem. This is Richard Werner, the top academic scholar in the world on central banking. He wrote the book and did the documentary, The Princes of the Yen, about the Japanese central bank. Here he is in Malmo, Sweden, in May. The nature of the CBDC, what, what is it actually going to look like? They never talk about that. Right. Um, but I heard one European central banker tell me what it's going to look like. He saw it. He was invited to one of the old central banks in Europe that are very much promoting this. And they showed him. And, you know, he's, he's a top, um, you know, executive director of another central bank in Europe. And there's no reason to believe that he was telling me a story. Um, and he was around this, this large and would be implanted under your skin. Okay, and finally, uh, I'm from America, and in America, many of us love Kanye West, who just had his bank accounts. He's a billionaire, very successful career in the entertainment industry. He's a billionaire, he just had his bank accounts frozen by J.P. Morgan Chase, and here he talks about what it's like to be a billionaire and have your money frozen and not be able to use your Apple Pay account. I went from being a multi-billionaire to not being able to use my Apple Pay. Four nights ago, I couldn't use my Apple Pay because somehow Adidas was able to legally go in and freeze my money. And when I see this, I think, well, if this could happen to me, this could happen to other Americans. And for what? You know, this can happen to an American that didn't even steal anything, that didn't even hurt anyone. FTX blew up in spectacular fashion. It looks like fraud. But in the wake of that, rather than thinking through, like, why did regulators let this happen? There's a new effort underway to regulate every single financial transaction that occurs in this country through something called the Central Bank Digital Currency, CBDC. If that happens, we're done. They can control you with a flick of a switch. So you should know what they're planning. So let's have
have a digital health certificate acknowledged by WHO if you have been vaccinated or tested properly then you can move around so for the next pandemic instead of stopping the movement of the people 100% which clogged the economy globally you know you can still provide some movement of the people indonesia has achieved G20 country has agreed to have this digital certificate using WHO standard and we will submit into the next the, uh, World Health Assembly in Geneva as the revision to international health regulation. So hopefully for the next pandemic, we can still see some movement of the people, some movement of the goods and movement of the economy. <laughs> So you might have missed what happened Wednesday afternoon at the Fed. But they started their CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Uh, by the way, um, India just rolled out its retail uh, mm -hmm. pilot program for digital rupees as well. Don't worry. I think maybe we should start having the conversation because this is coming. Maybe we should start having the conversation of, gosh, this looks like the mark of the beast. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it? But surely it's not. Surely it's not. Of surely. course not. Not from the U.S. government. No, no, no. They never do anything underhanded or evil. Never. never. Especially when Democrats are in control. Amen. You have this balance of power between the people and the bankers. And now what is happening under the guise of COVID-19 is the bankers have decided they no longer want to share power with the electorate or the people's representatives. And whether through FASB 56 or levering the governments up so they're deeply in debt and dependent on the central banks, the central banks have decided essentially to take over. And the ultimate sort of completion of this will be when they introduce digital currencies controlled and operated by the central bank. Why is that important? Because they won't be currencies, Dell. They will be a financial control system. To implement that system, they need the vaccine passports. And the goal of the vaccine passports have nothing to do with health. They have to do with implementing a new digital financial transaction system, which is in essence complete control. So I call it a slavery system. Uh, Dr. Naomi Wolf said vaccine passports are the end of human, human liberty in the West, and she's absolutely right. So when you say digital currencies, you know, I, at many of these events I, I've been speaking at, uh, many of my friends are, you know, big on Bitcoin or Ethereum saying this is our way forward. This is how we set ourselves free. This is how we break free of those power mongers running the world. And it sounds like you're saying, no, that's exactly this, how they finish the not, death blow. This is not what the central bankers are planning. Ideally, the response to COVID should be the establishment of a global healthcare system, a basic healthcare system for the entire human race. I mean, COVID makes it, it accelerates the process of digitalization and automatization. It legitimizes the deployment of mass surveillance even in democratic countries, and it makes surveillance go under your skin. Just imagine the situation when everybody goes around all the time with some biometric bracelet or other device that constantly monitors what's happening inside your body. So the moment your body temperature starts rising or there are other signs that something is wrong, the uh, health authority knows that you're sick and you're isolated, and that's it. That's the end of the epidemic. If we had such a system today, there won't be COVID. The same system that can know if I just got COVID or I have the flu can also know if I'm angry or if I'm bored or if I'm happy. And many of the things that I, 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 I visit a lot, both Europe and North America and China. And one of my main impressions is that many of the things I talk about and people in the West react with apprehension and fear, in China, the reaction to exactly the same topics is excitement. Wow, we can do that. Catherine Austin Fitz, I have a question for you, ma'am. These central bank digital currencies, how do they work? So... 
it's a digital currency and an all digital system that can be controlled centrally. So for example, we saw during COVID-19, there were rules saying you couldn't travel more than a certain amount of miles from your house, right? So there's certain behaviors you couldn't do. This is a digital system where the central bankers and in very centralized ways can make rules about what you can and cannot do with your money and they can enforce the rules with total surveillance. If people were to read Executive Order 14067, um, what kind of things are they going to find within Biden's Executive Order 14067? So they're not going to understand what CBDCs are by reading the executive order. Okay. So I would recommend that everybody go to Solari.com, and there's a section on the homepage called Cash Every Day. And if you click on it, there are a series of videos that will explain to you in very short order. The first one is a 56-second video from Augustine Karstens, the general manager of the Bank of International Settlements in, in Basel, Switzerland, who will explain to you in 56 seconds exactly how CBDCs will work. We tend to establish the equivalence with cash, uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important, and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, she, to what cash is. How concerned are you about the collapse of the U.S. dollar, sir? I'm very concerned. And it's more than just the U.S. There's, you know, there's a thing called the BRICS nations. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And uh, what happened in... Uh, 2021, I believe, when we abandoned Afghanistan. On that day, Saudi Arabia shifted allegiances from America trading in dollars, petrodollars. Saudi Arabia switched sides to China and Russia. It's the end of the, the dollar system. So the end is near for the US dollar and my concern is it's going to wipe out stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. Just for my generation, the boomer generation, we're in serious trouble because the only reason our stocks, bonds, mutual funds are up is because the Fed and the Treasury just kept printing more and more money. Instead of fixing the problem from 2008, they just kept printing more money. Mm -hmm. And it's about to come to an end. So that's why when I say to people, buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin, you know, you want to stay in what I call real assets, tangible assets. That's my opinion. Most people say buy U.S. treasuries. That's Harry Dent. I wouldn't trust anything printed by the U.S. government, but that's me. I don't like anything that can be printed. Now, the, the BRICS nations, again, to repeat, for everybody who's hearing this for the first time, you might hear about the BRICS nations. That's Brazil, Russia, India. China, Africa, those comprise roughly 41% of the Earth's population, and they are teaming up together to unseat the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. And now you have Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Nigeria, Venezuela, Algeria, Turkey, and Argentina all teaming up to unseat the U.S. dollar as the join. world's yeah. uh, U.S. You got, you're, the world's you're on it, man. You're on it. You're on it. Everybody, listen to this guy. He, he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. You have the oh. macro, macro picture. Very few people have that point of view. And the great reset will be the collapse of the dollar. 